guys and welcome back to Tech Girl Brianna. My name is Brianna and I make videos here on YouTube relating to technology, programming, web developing, and anything related to that. So come back every Tuesday for a new video from me. Thumbs up and subscribe and we'll get started with this video. Today I've teamed up again with hostchain.com for another awesome video. And today's video is about how DNS servers work. Whether you are accessing a website or sending an email, it uses a DNS server to access it. Your computer uses a DNS server to look up the domain name you are trying to access. DNS stands for Domain Name System. DNS is how domain names are translated into IP addresses. For example, if you type in globalfashiongal.com in your web browser, the DNS is resolving the name Global Fashion Gal into a numeric IP address, which is the address of my server. So it's kind of like a phone book. If you look up by someone's name in the phone book, typically this long sequence of numbers pops up. But it's much easier to remember the name than the numbers, right? That's essentially what's happening. It's being translated from the name into that number, but they're essentially the same thing. And you can actually access it either way. And since because we rather look up things by name rather than numbers, that is why we need a DNS. It sounds so simple, right? All it does is just convert a domain name into an IP address. DNS servers are processing billions of requests at the internet at any given time. And on top of that, millions of people are adding, changing IP addresses all the time. So how does your computer know which DNS server to use? That is usually maintained by your local internet service provider, whichever one you sign up with. And then those servers know the addresses. And then your ISP's DNS servers know the other root of other DNS servers. So what is a root DNS server? So as you know, websites are made up of a bunch of words, a period, and then a suffix. And these suffixes are the last part of a domain name. And this is what we call a top level domain, such as .com, .org, .net, .gov, and .edu. .com is the one we mostly use, which is for commercial websites, and it is open for everyone to use. And .edu obviously stands for education. It's restricted to schools and educational organizations. There are so many other top level domain extensions, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm sure we all know that there's thousands out there. So each one of these top level domains have their own root DNS servers. So as I was saying earlier, every time you add a period in your domain name, that indicates a different level of the domain. Now each level can have a different level of DNS server associated with it. For example, Global Fashion Gal in the .com domain is a second level domain. And it can have a separate DNS server from the .com. And I can also add subdomains like in front of Global Fashion Gal separated by a period, and they can also have their own DNS servers. But here's the problem. Any given domain has to be unique. So that way it prevents conflicts and having a duplicate problem. There needs to be some way to control the list, and that's where registrars come in. Some of you might know them as Host Jane, GoDaddy, Google, that can assign domain names directly under one or more top-level domains. After it's been recorded, it gets transferred over to a Whois database, basically who says who owns the domain name and their contact information. And after you've selected the domain, you need to select a DNS server that will be associated with that domain. Typically, your own hosting provider will already have this part handled, so you don't necessarily have to set up your own DNS server. Now that I've covered most of that stuff, I'm now going to get into how the DNS actually resolves the domain name into an IP address. So what will happen first is that your computer might have the IP address of the web page you're trying to access cached, and they'll try to resolve that first. And if you don't have it locally, then what it'll do, it'll try to contact your internet service provider's DNS server and try to resolve it that way. But if that doesn't work, then it contacts the .com or whatever top level domain is trying to contact. And it'll just keep cascading from there until it eventually resolves it and it loads the web page properly. Or if a certain amount of time has already passed and it still can't resolve it, then it'll automatically display the cannot find web page error that we all know really well. All right, I hope this video at least helped you out more on basic understanding of how DNS servers work. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe to see more of these types of videos from me. I have some more awesome content that I think you guys should check out. So make sure you click the videos on my screen at the end of this video to see what they are. I have an Instagram, which I think you should follow. It is at techgirlbriana. The link will also be down below make sure you follow me send me a personal message and then maybe I will follow you back thank you and I will see you in my next video okay bye guys